Alright guys, I am back with another video, so uh, don't be alarmed by that frame rate. It does that whenever I do a split screen here. Uh, that's just part of it. So, before I get started and forget about this, this is one of the major updates I made. So I did discover that evaluating the chooser on a tick is five times heavier. And so the best way I could overcome that is to use this method and I profiled that against not using it and it was five times more expensive whenever I did it uh, just with the evaluation so that's why I'm checking all the states within this to see if they have changed and if they have changed then I will evaluate it and if it's currently interpolating, then we'll, we'll continue interpolating. I might actually make that so that the interpolation is a separate check. But anyway, that way it just bypasses all of this during interpolation. But anyway, the point is, is that it's a hell of a lot more performance heavy to just run this evaluation uh, every frame. Hopefully they will make this more performance friendly in the future. Now I have this right here and by default it is enabled and that allows you to come in here and if we go to, I'm just going to exit out of this because I have too many windows open here. If I go to the M9 idle rest and I go to the legs, I can now put this in mesh space and you'll see it doesn't offset them from the ground like it was before because I fixed that. And so now you, now you can experiment and see what happens whenever you put it in local space, mesh space, you know, overlay, base, whatever. Uh, without it offsetting them. Also, I constrained the IK bones as well for uh, to future proof it, I guess. So other than that, I did add an experimental thing some of you might like and use it with caution because it's, a, it's an extremely experimental uh, method and it may require that that your poses be designed around the stance that you want your character to be in. And I will give you an example of that right here. So I put a warning here with some information on it. And I did a lot of experimenting until I got it to a state where it was uh, usable. And this is a very extreme pose. And normally this would cause serious issues, but the feet only move slightly and it's really more of a rotation there. So it may look a little funny because I'm having to blend back into it very rapidly, uh, but you can experiment with those settings. Also, if you'll notice whenever he's moving this way and he stops the the legs kind of cross that's mostly uh, because of the way he runs forward and to the left his legs are really close together on those animations so sometimes if you stop just right then his legs may cross so that's something to keep in mind if you decide you want to use that now I'll briefly explain how this works. Right here I have it set to 150, so whenever he reaches 150, we're going to be completely blended out of that and into the regular motion matching animations. And 200 might actually be more appropriate, because I think 150 doesn't give enough of a window uh, to uh, close that gap but you'll see now the 
legs are more likely to cross whenever you do that. So I, I don't know what to tell you. It's It was just an experiment. And you could probably get around this by leaving it at 150 and just saying 0.5. Five, and that means only 50% of this pose will get blended in. Now I have this right here because I want the hands to not be, I don't want the fingers to be messed with whenever we're in a unarmed state. But really, if you're in anything but an unarmed state, then you actually don't need this right here. So I might set up a bull that decides if this gets blended or not because it's not needed if you're not in an unarmed state. And the reason why is because I'm overriding the hands for the pistol holding and the rifle holding states. And you'll see this actually looks a little bit better because we're only blending into it about 50%. Uh, so the stops look less jolting and a little bit more natural. Uh, there is there was a little bit of leg crossing right there, but there may be a way to fix that. I'll have to look into it. Like I said, this is experimental. So I may leave the settings like that, and you can decrease that if you want. But it's up to you. Just an experiment. I may end up removing this later. I don't know. We'll see. I might try to find a better way to do that, which may cause less problems. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. We have uh, a weapon firing thing. Oh yeah, there's one more thing that I have to show you. Okay, so on KD's, portion of this where he added the firing mechanism and the sounds right now it's camera uh, right now it's based off of the the rotation of it is based off of this scene actor right here I tried using the socket rotation but my vector math is fairly weak and I couldn't seem to get it to align properly uh, the bone is rotated the wrong direction, so it goes in the opposite direction. And if I rotate it, if I rotate the rotator by 90 degrees to get it to face forward, then it does something weird where it, it only shoots straight out in front. It won't shoot up or down. So if I'm aiming down, it'll still shoot straight Uh for whatever reason, I don't know. So this was my solution for it. I just got this scene actor and I just used its rotation. And so by default, it's going to shoot out of the straight out of the barrel of the gun. If you check this though, it's it'll be camera based and it'll always shoot towards the center of the screen. And that's basically it. That's the rundown. I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, uh, before I go, guys, I did fix that swimming problem with the hand, where the hand was uh, swimming around. Uh, what was the problem is it was the breathing animation. The hands were not synchronized within the breathing animation, and so I had to resynchronize them. But yeah, that's basically it. I'll see you guys in the next video.